Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Wednesday, June 25th, 2014. The first article that I have today is from Blacklisted News. Systemic pesticides pose global threat to biodiversity, harming bees, butterflies, fish, and birds. Neurotoxic pesticides blamed for the world's bee collapse are also harming butterflies, worms, fish, and birds, said a scientific review that called Tuesday for tighter regulation to curb their use. Sounds like a good idea to me. Be nice if, you know, people voluntarily stopped using them. That's a more libertarian point of view, and uh, we can certainly stop buying produce that is grown with the use of these chemicals. From LaRouche Pack, Wall Street issues a risky business global warming report. Peons must submit to loss of life to save planet. I wish you know, I wish these these guys were uh, as concerned about pesticides as they are about pretend global warming, uh, they are asking uh, for tighter regulations on CO2 emissions. Uh, the public must submit to further, further bail-in of their means of existence in obeisance to green lies. Uh, and this, this article refers to uh, another confab of billionaires that uh, had to do with the same the same issue CO2 and this is from a website called governamerica.com slash news and it reports on the meeting that Prince Charles recently had uh, or actually, I guess it was sponsored by a, a Rothschild. Um, population control zealot Prince Charles, for example, cited discredited theories about humanity's alleged role in global warming. Temperature increases have been missing in action for 18 years and counting, despite the hysteria and predictions, to demand a radical redesign of society and business. And uh, this also mentions Agenda 21 and uh, Don and I had a little, uh, we noticed we were in a place yesterday that is uh, kind of dedicated to Agenda 21 principles and we filmed a video and uh, I'm going to include some clips in uh, from that here but I do just want to mention that as we've been traveling I it seems that vacation spots I notice it here on the west coast we're in kind of a resort town uh, renowned for surfing and when we were on the beach at the Outer Banks of North Carolina there seems to be they, they put they put the Agenda 21 kind of technology, the uh, scarcity technology, into uh, vacation places. I think it's probably because people's defenses are down when they're on vacation. They're maybe open to new ideas. On the Outer Banks, uh, the house where we stayed, of course, all low-flow toilets, and honestly, most of the time, they need to be flushed three to two to three times. And I freely do that just to make the point that they don't work. Uh, also, uh, lights that come on based on motion sensor, whether you want the light on or not, the light is on. Uh, there's no way to turn it off. And of course, you know, it's motion sensor turns it on and then it automatically turns off after, I think it's five minutes. So if you happen to be in the bathroom longer than five minutes and you do want the light, 
you have to move around kind of dramatically every so often to keep the light on. And uh, just th technology like that that's really, I find, unpleasant based on the idea of scarcity. And they, they put this kind of technology in uh, resort areas. And again, I think it's they, they want to get people away from home and think, oh, this is trendy, this is the latest thing, this must be good. Uh, and as the video will show, we, we were uh, at another resort town on the west coast, and there is a, uh, an obvious design according to Agenda 21 principles, and even a plaque on the wall, not specifically noting Agenda 21, but certainly the principles. So here's that clip. Hope you enjoy that. So Don and I are in this lovely little plaza and it's a food court for Whole Foods partly and it's charming and beautiful but there's housing upstairs and the explanation for that is right here The mixed-use development of public station allows people to live, work, and shop all in one location. Furthermore, this project is located in a workable community situated near residential zones and commercial areas that provide basic services. All of this is located within a half mile of the project and is an example of the area's community connectivity. In other words, Agenda 21. Moving on from there, Cynthia McKinney shared this great post on Facebook uh, about what really happened to Michael Jackson. And there is a book that's been released. Cynthia McKinney wrote, Speaking of the cabal, isn't this news about Michael Jackson's estate interesting? According to reports, Katherine Jackson and the kids get 1% of the proceeds, while 99% go to the executors, attorneys, and accountants. The will is fake, and the family knows it. That's why they went to court against those Hollywood execs that use racial epithets to describe their black clients. Leonard Rowe, still in prison, wrote about the fake will in his book. This article talks about what the children will get and what the fake executors are taking right now. Read the scandalous situation here made to look as if the executors have performed a miracle. And uh, there's a link to the book here for sale on Amazon. And uh, actually that's this link. And uh, this is more information. So, really tragic, and you know, uh, I happen to be a Michael Jackson fan, I've stated that before. His song, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us, and the video that uh, was produced for that song is j just a tremendous statement of uh, frustration and rebellion. And... Uh, let, re, withdrawing consent from the system. And uh, there's an article here <laughs> that I want to get to, but I really wanted to point this out because I've been noticing this more and more. It's very difficult to find alternative news articles uh, through Google, even using Start Page. What I was searching for was a tweet that I saw, RT America, Boehner Mulls suing Obama, and this was yesterday, I think, or maybe today, so I just uh, put June 2014. So, what search results do you get? Well, you, you get a, an advertisement. Um, you do get this link to RT News. Um, it goes to Newsline, but it's 
you know, you have to find it once you get there. Same with this, rt.com. Um, and beyond that, uh, not, not good results. Uh, you know, you don't find references to it or mentions of it or um, republications of it. It is, it's, it's very, it's gotten very difficult to find alternative news in searches. And I've noticed this increasingly. You really have to remember where you saw something uh, in order to get there. And, and that's, that's too bad. That's, you know, it's censorship. Uh, so here is the article on RT. Uh, Boehner mulls suing Obama over executive orders. We will see how far this gets. Uh, it might just be more bluster because obviously they are realizing, Congress is realizing more and more how uh, more and more American people are not being fooled and are requiring some kind of action. Um, but at any rate, it's kind of, kind of interesting progress here. And I have another example, even more dramatic, uh, of a search that, that just, you know, I knew I, from a tweet on Drudge, uh, Drudge, court pulls plug on internet streaming startup. I, I used the exact headline and did not have the yield of the article that I was looking for. Uh, so of course I had to go to Drudge and do a search. But uh, here it is. U.S. Supreme Court pulls the plug on Aereo's streaming TV service. And I don't know how significant this is. I, I paused whether to include it or not. But I do think it's just an example of how vicious and uh, how vicious the, the copyright enforcement people are and how the courts are pretty much in their pockets. Uh, and this is a streaming service that would uh, send a TV program to just an individual. It's pretty much like uh, if you went, in, in some respects, this is like if you went into a restaurant and you could watch network television there. Um, this is it's basically the same thing. This is not uh, a public performance. This is this is just you know one person watching one show via their phone. So I think the courts uh, were too, were too uh, strong in siding with the copyright people, the networks. Um, but you know, again, this, this isn't. I really want to just highlight. I don't have a strong opinion about this, but the fact that the courts do render opinions on the side of the copyright people for the most part, the networks and copyright enforcement folks. For the good news of the day update, Gary Oldman answers ADL charges of anti-Semitism in Playboy interview. And Gary Oldman uh, spoke out on behalf of uh, the First Amendment and being able to uh, speak your mind without fearing repercussions and uh, he you know wants to have the freedom to speak he believes that people should have the freedom to speak and not necessarily have to be politically correct in everything they say so uh, I've always been rather a fan of Gary Oldman and I'm glad to know that he is in favor of the First Amendment. He's out there 
enforcing the Bill of Rights in his way. And may we all do the same. Thank you for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hoping that you will love one another, take care, and yeah, enforce the Bill of Rights. <laughs>